Hello to all our followers and welcome to this new episode of 5 Minutes. Today we talk about the cost of inequality in Latin America, lessons and warnings for the rest of the world. With our guest, Professor Diego Sanchez Sancrochea, Professor of the Political Economy of Development of Oxford Department of International Development. Diego, welcome to 5 Minutes. It's a big honor and a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, thank you, Diego. Uh, this interview, you know, takes inspiration from a book you recently published. It's very, very interesting, by the way, since I had the opportunity to read some parts. And the, the title of the book is, of course, as the title of this interview, The Cost of Inequality in Latin America, Lessons and Warnings for the Rest of the World. So the first question that I would like to address here is the following. Why inequality and why Latin America? Let me thank you again for the invitation, Luca. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. So I think socioeconomic inequality has clearly become a growing problem across the world in the last three or four decades and contributes to many other um, disparities, including in race and gender. Um, but the question is, what, what inequality do we have in mind? And I think it's important to focus on the difference between the wealthy and the rest of the population. So just to give you an example, in the United States, between 1980 and 2015, the income of the top 0.1% grew by 400% compared to just 100 for the economy as a whole. So huge disparities. And if we are worried about this concentration of, at the top, and I think we should, um, we should also pay more attention to the experience of Latin America, not only because it's the most unequal region of the world, but it's one where the elites are particularly powerful. Thank you very much. So in what ways has inequality been costly for Latin America? So in the book, I discuss um, three types of problems or three types of costs, economic, political and social. So let me give you an example briefly of each of them. Economically, Economic. the elite has faced incentives to promote, um, limited incentives, sorry, to promote things like quality education, investment, innovation and development and has actually refused to pay uh, enough taxes because it didn't need to, and it had the strength to oppose it. Politically, inequality has led to the concentration of power in the hands of the wealthy, who had actually promoted very weak democracies and sometimes even dictatorships. And not surprisingly, the rest of the population has responded uh, to these problems or to these systems by feeling attracted to populist leaders who has actually redistributed some income but also contributed to a lot of instability and polarization. So that's the second set of problems. Socially, uh, inequality, at least in Latin America, goes hand in hand with racism and also with violence. The region is, not surprisingly, uh, one of the most violent in terms of homicides in the world. Thank you. So my question is then, how did the region to, f to fight inequality? I love this question because I don't want to think about Latin America only in terms of the bad, but also in terms of some of the, of the important and positive lessons. Uh, and it has several, particularly in terms of ideas and movements. So in terms of ideas, Latin American thinkers has developed some of the most exciting ideas, in my view, about how inequality takes place and how to fight it. So we have a structuralism in economics with Raul Previch, liberation theology in religion, or Freire's pedagogy of the oppressed in terms of how to educate children. Um, the region is also um, the hotbed of some of the most dynamic and interesting social movements in the world, like the Brazilian landless movement, or think about the Chilean student protest. And I think these movements are particularly interesting because they focus on concrete needs, but actually link them to broader social demands because they, are, they connect the local and the national spaces very clearly, and because they have built autonomous, but very dynamic relations to political parties. And I think all of those are lessons that other parts of the world can, can learn about. So to continue then with the question is, which lessons and warnings can we take from Latin America for the rest of the world? Then? Yes, I think a big, big warning um, is key, which is 
when inequality becomes very high, it is very hard to reverse. And this is something that both countries in Europe and the US should remain to remember. Why? Because I think it creates all kinds of vicious circles. So let me give you again another couple of examples. The concentration of income, as we just saw, leads to uh, insufficient in innovation and therefore insufficient economic growth, which in terms leads to uh, growing informal labor markets, which feeds back into inequality. So there we have a circle of uh, inequality, low growth, informal markets, more inequality. Or in terms of um, the social sphere, inequality leads to racism, it leads to divided cities, and this weakens actually the prospects of collaboration between the middle class and the poor, which has been at the center of redistribution in Sweden and other in the Scandinavian countries. So there, inequality leads to divisions, divisions leads to lack of collaboration, and lack of collaboration to the weakness of redistributed policies. And I think if we believe those uh, vicious circles, then we need to be very worried about what happens in the US, in Europe, and we need to very quickly try to tackle inequality with new policies and new politics. Thank you so much, Diego, for this very interesting discussion. We wish you all the best and we really hope to see you here again at five minutes. I hope so. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.